Hey, in this video, you're going to see a technique using the Festool LI32 system and the Sys AZ drawers to bore in the middle of a larger panel. It's a great technique and skill to learn. So the cabinets I have for my miter saw station, they're very specific measurements. I'll go over that in a future video. What I want to talk about today is the Sys AZ drawers for the Festool Sustainer system. You could actually customize them and not have to use the LR32 line boring system, but I like to do it, and the reason is the simple fact that I can adjust them at any time in 32 millimeter increments. So the instructions that come with the Sys AZ are very specific. It's 58 millimeters from the front of your cabinet, and then an additional for the secondary hole, another 224 millimeters. Now here's the kicker that I want you to pay attention to. From the bottom, you need at least eight millimeters of space, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. So, also, you'll also see this. The minimum is 380 millimeters uh, wide, but I've always cut mine at 400 because I have uh, 18 millimeter nailers. So pay attention and <laughs> stay tuned. So we're gonna get punching real quick here. So the first thing I did is I ripped these at 400. I added a one millimeter edge banding here. Now this is gonna be my nailer. It's gonna be a little bit wider, but I wanna show you it's 18 millimeter. So when I measure from here to here for the Sys AZ drawer, you're gonna see it, it's greater than 380. So let's do a little bit of math or a little bit of layout right in the beginning so you can wrap your head around this. So come in here, cameraman. My first hole is going to be 32 from the bottom. And the reason I chose that, of course, it's the 32 up and out on the end stops. I went over that in previous videos. Okay, but the instructions say I need 8 millimeters of clearance at least or greater than. And the reason I have that is this part right here. This is a lock for the Sys AZ drawer. Not really a lock, but a, just a, a catch. We're gonna place this, the first hole 58 millimeters from the front. I'll go over that in a few minutes. But if I have it like this, so let's see, the first hole is 32, and then my span or my top or my bottom is gonna be right in here. Chris, come over here so we can see this. Okay, the distance between the bottom of the cabinet or top to that first hole is 14, so I'm in. If I would have chosen the 16, I would have had a much larger space and I wouldn't have maximized my cabinet. So that's why I chose 32 up and out on the end stop. We'll put this on the LF32 rail in a minute. So this catch will go just like this. And then the next hole, which is space 32 millimeters here, for the first hole, and we're gonna punch that out, five millimeter hole, and then the back one. And this is why I wanted to do the video. The back one is spaced from that first hole after 58 millimeters, 224. So I'll show you how to lay all this out and how to punch them. So keep watching. So I cut the length of the board or the sides of the board at a 32 millimeter increment. It just happens to be 768. I laid it out here, cut it with my MFT and cut all my sides. And you'll see on this fast cap tape, every little diamond is a 32 millimeter increment. It actually worked out perfect for the overall height I needed the cabinet, including a uh, cleat at the bottom for the levelers, and you'll see that in another video coming up soon. So let's set up the rail for all the sides. It's pretty easy. This is the end stop. It's got a couple numbers on it. It's got the 32 here and the 16 here. Normally, when I'm building cabinets, I use a 16. But today, I'm gonna use a 32 for this very specific miter saw station cabinet. So you'll see the 32 whenever I'm using one of these numbers. It's up facing me and out toward me. So I'm just gonna bring it in like this. And you see I can lock it in here. I'm doing this so you can see it. I could have moved it up the rail, but it's easier for me to index because you see right here where that's a half a hole. It's going to measure 32 from the front. Oh my God, look at the layout. Can you get that, Chris? See how that's right in the center? So what we'll do is I'll mark my rail right here because that's where my first hole's going to be when I punch it. Now, the other reason I cut a balance panel is I'm going to use the other end stop. I'm going to install it 
32 up and out, and you're gonna see how there's no space in here. It's actually super tight. That way there, I only have one set of lines if I wasn't using all the holes. And I explained that, I believe, in the last LR32 video when we built a simple cabinet. So I'm gonna mark it here, and I'm gonna make sure I have complete adjustability over the years of this cabinet, because I can repurpose this for anywhere in my shop. And that second hole is gonna be right here. So this will be my bottom, this is my front. Sometimes you wanna label things front, back. This is my bottom. You don't have to do this, but I just inherently do this. Okay, so there we go. There's your rail setup. So these are the instructions <laughs> for the SIS AZ drawer system. And it says right here, that first hole from the front is 58 millimeters. So it's pretty simple. I need to position this rail after I have set up everything and calibrated everything, I need to calibrate these at 58 millimeter. So I'm just gonna take it, there's 50, see the zero right here? I'm gonna line it up with the 58 millimeter line. I've calibrated these. We have a video on how to set up the LR32 system. So I'm gonna lock that on, bring it over like this. And that, that one is set. I'm just gonna set the next one. Never get in a hurry with the LR32 systems. Always make sure you clamp the rail. And it's pretty simple, quick on and off. So one of the things when clamping, oh my God, I had a real uh, problem one time with this, is if you notice, I clamped that end and that point, see how when I clamped it, it's separated? I am always pulling it and verifying it before I clamp it. That'll save you a little headache there. So the screws that you get with the drawer system, the SIS AZs, are a little bit longer. I used to punch these holes at 10 millimeter, but the instructions say set your depth at 13 millimeter. Setting depth is wicked easy. Just take the router, put it on the rail with the plate, take it, bring the bit down, zero it out, make sure that's loose. Take, don't, I hate reading scale, so I just took a five and an eight millimeter domino. I believe that still adds up to 13, and there's my 13 millimeter depth. Okay, so the next step is just punching out the holes, but I wanna show you a technique I use. This, sometimes I get going and I get a bunch of panels to punch and I skip holes. Always check afterwards you've punched every hole, but a way to avoid that is, I'm not gonna turn it on, I'm just gonna show you. This is my starting point right here, so I'm gonna punch that one. Then what I'll do is I'll pick up the pin that registers in these holes, I'll push it so I hear a click, and then I'll punch it, then I'll do the next one. That way there, there's less tendency to forget a hole. So you're gonna notice as it's ramping down, my hand has never left that portion. So let's do some layout because when we look at the instructions, we did the 58 from the front, right? Okay, uh, but right here from the center of that first hole at 58, there has to be a distance for the slide of 224 millimeters. So if I do my math correctly, 224 plus 58 is 282. And I show you how I always check it. So I'm just gonna come here, do some quick layout to 82, and there's my line. I'm just gonna bring it down here. That'll help me lay out my rail. But let's see, if I cut this at 400 millimeters, that means at 282, that's 118 from the back. And you'll see it's 118 right there. So here's where everybody gets discombobulated with the Festool LR32 system. Here's the scale, and you'll notice that there's no 118 to get it from the back, all right? But you'll notice I can't go from the front because it only goes to 110, that's 282 from the front. 
So let me show you my technique on how to set this up. It's wicked easy and it kind of opens you up to wherever you need to bore that second line of drawer slide holes. So this is why I say it's wicked easy. Come in here, cameraman. You see that little point right there? What I'm gonna do, and I wanted to make sure you saw this, is the flat bottom boring five millimeter bit. I'm gonna line it up on that line. That's why I did that layout line. So I'm gonna take it like this, put it on the rail, okay? And I'm gonna bring it down, and I do this for clarity. Uh, I'll bring it like this, and I'll bring it right down, just like this. And it'll be a back and forth but I'll line this up absolutely perfect. So here's the takeaway from this entire video. I'm going to take this, I'm not gonna put it on here, I'm gonna put it on this rib. I'm gonna bring it in like this. I'm still on my center line. I'm gonna lock this in and I'm gonna bring my pin just like this and lock it in. And if you think about it, this part of these holes, say you get like 10 panels, that's only one setup. So once you have these set just like this, then you can punch all those center holes. So once I set this one here, and this is on center line, that point, I'm gonna bring it down here, and I'm gonna grab it, put the bit down exactly in the center like I did over there, and bring my pin in just like this, and tighten this up. So once I have this set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release this, the uh, plunge and I'm gonna come down and check the line all the way down, making sure I'm up against that. And then that's absolutely perfect. So what I'll do is I'll lock it in and get punching. So whether for my Mitre saw stand cabinet or any cabinet that's a wider panel, you can bore into the center any way you want with the Festool LI32 system by understanding center line and the parallel stops for the system. Hey, I hope this was helpful. And like we always say, it's from the Sedge Tool Shop. Be positive and stay sharp.